No, no, no. No cord, Don. Welcome to this monthly non-duality Zoom with Don Garland and me. Thank you for coming, everybody. Please keep your microphones muted until invited to speak. This is being shared live on YouTube. So by asking your question, you are giving consent to be recorded and be on YouTube. We encourage you to raise your hand virtually after the brief introduction by unmuting yourself and turning on your camera. Alternatively, you can just write your question in the chat or on YouTube. So in the Zoom chat or in the YouTube chat, and I won't read your name so you can be anonymous that way. So if you wanna ask a question anonymously, go ahead and type it in and I'll just read the question. Uh, be helpful for me if you put it into a question form though and keep it uh, brief and to the point. Uh, this is for entertainment purposes only. No medical advice is given here. Just talking about beingness. And <clears throat> so let me just pull up the YouTube, see for the YouTube folks, sorry. I'll do that later. Anyway, um, so just a brief introduction. You know, when I was seeking, I used to, one of the things I would do was I'd sit there and I'd say, I'm not my body, I'm not my mind. I'm not the body, I'm not the mind. It's almost like a mantra. And the seeing of non-duality was realizing there's nobody here to not be the body and not be the mind. <laughs> there's nothing here separate from a body and mind. No thing appears as a body and a mind. And so even in my seeking, I thought there was oneness and I thought there was me. And I thought that I had to get to the oneness. There's not even a thing called oneness. All there is, is this. And nothing is apart from that. There's no way to get to it. There's no way to get away from it. It's no thing being everything. And it's not about being in a state. Um, it's not about bliss. It's not about awareness. If bliss happens, bliss happens, but nobody's doing that. The real and the unreal are not two. There's no other place to get to. There's nothing better. There's nothing different. It's just a train going by. It's vibrant, it's alive. Uh, somebody just asked me a question in my last Zoom about when I said, no thing is not nothing, because no thing is everything. No thing is all there is. No thing is what's speaking. No thing is what's listening. No thing apparently went to the store today and bought groceries. <laughs> But there is no cause and effect. See, this it's a timeless, spaceless, apparent happening to no one by no one. So did I go to the store? I did. But did I really? No, there's no one here that went to the store. But going to the store seem to happen. Life seems to happen. And 
there's no getting out of that because there's no one in that. There's no one having a life. There's no one in a life. There's no one in a situation. It's um, this thing here is just whatever's arising in, in this present moment experience. But no one's having the experience. Whatever words are coming out, whatever thoughts are arising, whatever expressions are happening here, this is what I am. But it's not solid, it's not real, it's not, doesn't have a location. It's this no thing apparently expressing itself. And anyway, um, I'm going to admit some more people. And with that, I give you Don Garland. Don, you're muted. Oops. I'll start, I'll start again. Okay, 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 sorry. Uh, okay. So yeah, um, I've disappeared. Um, the surprise in this <laughs> is that, yeah, there's no location for being, there's no one in here, there's no one anywhere. And the beauty of that is, is the love. So there's this, the emptiness and the fullness arise together in the seeing of this and the, um, when the seeking stops. So there's, it's much better when the person isn't there. So it's seen the person was never there and there is no identity at all. So in that sense, it's absolute freedom. And, and love. And so there's um, a reconciliation between you and the world in a sense it's uh because there's no inner either that there's a joy in communion with others and the story of time which still exists which is what we mean by when we say reality um when we talk about what's real that's what we mean but so there's an unloveness with everything beyond separation there just is this intimacy that's restored and beyond anything that was known before. And the surprise is no surprise. And that's a surprise as well, because it's so, the before, in the before and after story, it can be very radically different. Um, perception is amplified, everything that was subdued before because perceptual apparatus is, we never really use it fully when we're kind of immersed in the mind and the mind kind of takes all our energy. So there's that freedom as well, just to look and just to be, and no one is doing that. And it's very nice. <laughs> I think that'll do. Thank you, Don. Well, if anyone has a question or a comment, uh, go ahead and raise your hand. Okay, Leo, go ahead and unmute yourself. Uh, uh, yes, uh, thank you. I, I just wanted to say I joined in just now and uh, I'm in London. So I, th this is my first first time in this uh, meetup group. Just wanted to say that. Uh, Hi. <laughs> nice to meet you. 
Thank you. Thank you, Leo. Cool. You're still here, Leo. Do you want to say anything about what brought you here, or? I, I just, uh, yeah, I just joined. I mean, I basically, I, I don't know any like, um, not, like if you ask any specific question, I'd be able to say I just. All right. So it's yeah. just curiosity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is, yeah, that's. Uh, curiosity to learn something new okay so you don't know what non-duality you don't know anything about it at all uh non-duality i don't know if non-duality is same as singularity i'm all not right. sure i thought non-duality means uh singularity so i i yeah that's that's what my thing is but i i may know non-duality in in a different way but i like uh yeah uh, i do not practice it like knowing that it is non-duality i may know it i may be following it but i just do not know like sometimes you are a minimalist but you do not know that you are following minimalism uh like you have been decluttering stuff around you ever since childhood but only uh, when you grow up as an adult, you come across this term minimalism from all over. You see it in news, you see it on the website. Sure. And then you, yeah, so it's the same thing, I think. Yeah, it can be like that. I mean, awakening could happen and you wouldn't know. And then you can be listening to words like non duality the whole time. And then suddenly it dawns on you hold on. Yeah. This is what's going on. And, yeah. you know, it's almost like you're deaf to these these terms that you've never heard before and then suddenly you're not you take an interest and it becomes alive and vivid and you yeah. see it everywhere and you think oh my god everybody's into this but actually it's in the non-dual world it's actually still quite niche in some ways you know yeah. but it doesn't seem like that because you start tuning into it everywhere but yeah you can I guess be a minimalist and not know it you could be awake and not know it but not possibly not give a shit about that like because there's no one here to give a shit, but also, yeah. you know, but it probably feels better. <laughs> I don't know if minimalism feels better. It might, or it might not. I don't know. <laughs> but, but. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I gave an example because I follow minimalism. So I just, <laughs> right, okay. that, that, that came in my mind. So I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. Fair play. Uh, I have two hands up. Uh, so, Ali, please unmute yourself. Uh, that's it. Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Um, sorry, I haven't got my camera on. I'm like quite coldy and everything. And, you know, my eyes are a bit sore. So, um, sorry about that. I you don't mind. Um, a bit awkward. Um, but, um, Sorry, um, it's also my first time. I'm in London as well, like um, glasses either, like um, Leo, Leo, is it Leo? Um, and I, I sort of, I, I sort of was a bit late as well, so I'm really sorry because um, I couldn't get in. But um, um, anyway, the reason I joined um, is because um, um, I had no idea about non-duality until about six years ago. Anyway, I had this experience on the plant medicine retreat and um I now know it was a non-dual experience and um it it was massive it was the, it was beyond words you know and it was the big defining a big defining point in my life and I've been trying to understand and integrate it ever since um and now I I do understand it but I feel like um I feel like, um, I don't know if you re relate to this, but I feel quite alone in it. Like I feel like, cause I've had that experience, 
you know, it, it um, isolates me and um, is such a huge experience that very, very few people will ever have, you know, that I feel really alone in it. And actually like, although it was, although I don't regret it at all, it was the most amazing thing beyond words that's ever happened and ever will happen to me. Um, I feel that I haven't been able to integrate it to enhance my life. I feel that it's really kind of gone the other way where, you know, I can't, I can speak about it, but only in certain circles. And I, you know, I haven't been able to use it to enhance my life. And it, it was such a huge experience for me, you know, I now know it was like a non-dual experience, you know, and I, I know there's nothing beyond that, you know, for absolute certainty, you know, but I don't, you know, I find it, I don't know what to do with that experience. It feels quite lonely to have had that experience. And if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you want to go Walter or not, but it, it, I don't know, you, you signed, I don't know what kind of age, but you sound quite young. I don't know whether you are or not, but no, I'm not. Are you not? You've got to go to a very young voice. Um, it can it can be isolating, um, but it sounds like you've got some kind of groups there or some. You know, do you do you feel like um, identification has come back? Do you, do you feel a sense of a me has kind of returned then, or um, is it like a? I feel I feel very different because I know it's changed me because I know I know what it is to be connected to everyone in all times okay. and all, you know that like I knew it I knew it intellectually before but now I know from experience you know and it you know it was like it was an ego death experience you know yeah and it made me unafraid of death you know yeah but it but it hasn't enhanced my life and I you know I don't I've always struggled with well you know I've had that and it you know very few people will have that in their lives and that you know certainly it would change the world if people did because you know they would realize that the experience of being connected to everyone and everything every time you know yeah it's massive you know but I don't you know I I don't know how to, uh, it's almost like I can't integrate into my life, you know, for what, the benefit of myself. In fact, it's gone the other way, you know. What do you mean when you say integrate it into your life? What, what is it that you mean by that? You know, well, um, like it, like the nature of non-dual, like, so it wasn't one thing. It was many things like it was, it was, you know, I, I it was a death experience. It was very yeah. traumatic it was super blissful you know yeah. all of these things right but but um it like it hasn't it changed my life but it hasn't enhanced my life you know is it because your circumstances are the same as well or are you feeling kind of is there a yeah. sense that you don't fit into your environment in the same way yeah. well, now I don't fit in more you know because it's yeah. quite a it's a very isolated experience that you can't share with many people. And yeah. imagine having the biggest experience you'll ever have in your life and you yeah. can't share it with almost anyone. Yeah, no, that, that is lonely. And, and also you've changed and everyone around you hasn't. So yeah. even though there's that, this intimacy, then there's this kind of alienation as well. So it, it is difficult. And, and well, obviously there's some outlets for the people closest to you that you probably share everything else with you just you suddenly got this almost like a secret right it's yeah but it's a huge secret you know yeah. and I just walk around with it you know yeah it, yeah so maybe it's kind of sometimes when you bring your life kind of in alignment with it it can kind of help as well like whatever it is you know to that needs to be changed but but yeah I mean it's just it's a common, it's a common experience. And I think there isn't, you know, in some cases it's more than others There kind of need to, to share this. Like there's a desire to from the kind of joy as well, isn't there? And, you know, 
I also think it affects a lot of things. Your perception of everything around you and how you speak is even affected by this. So in a sense, you don't fit in so many things the same way as you did before because the sense of hierarchy, the sense of authority, all that kind of collapses as well. So it yeah. kind of leaves you, it kind of leaves you kind of stuck some somehow, but it gets easier. It gets easier dealing with that, I think. You know, I don't know if you want to say anything, Walter. Oh yeah, I'm just curious when when did that happen, the shift? About six years ago. Oh, six years. Wow. Because, yeah, there was um, a settling down, I would say. The, there's an analogy about a fan that gets unplugged, you know, and it stopped. But what happened, um, yeah, there was like this no fear of death, for example, seems strange in a way because I could see so much of what was happening either on TV or whatever was just about like preserving this thing that <laughs> no longer existed. So it was just weird. Um, there was just a lot of strange things. Um, but yeah, I could see that everyone else seemed to be operating from this idea that there was a separate person in here running their life and that they had to uh, get happiness through changing life circumstances and just everything that I had been doing. But so when all that dropped, it was, but I, it's still at the same time, I could see, oh, this is just what's happening. There's no one really that's, uh, at odds with anything or uh, separate from anything. It's just what's arising. So in that way, I could see conditioning, programming, uh, people, you know, they're not like robots, but just nobody had a choice in what they believed or what they were saying. And neither did this. It was the same, it's the same outpouring so but that was kind of vivid too to see oh wow they're just saying that because that was that's what they had to say they didn't have a choice in saying that i don't have a choice in saying this uh so it could be jarring uh i'm surprised six years though because it, it you know it seemed to i guess we're using this word integration it seemed to all come together fairly quickly. So I, I don't know, that seems like a long time, just just based on, you know, if we're comparing in that way, but I, so I don't really know what else to say. Um, can I just add, like, you, you know, I mean, you don't want your camera on, which is absolutely fine, but is there a sense of like, actually there's something that you fear to come out with this, you know, like, do you fear sort of some sort of consequences around it or? No, no. Um, it's just that like, um, it's, it's harder to live my life because um, I know the interconnection of everything. Okay. And, um, you know, I know that life is an illusion. I know it. You yeah. Know, and I know that, you know, I know, I know I experienced place where I'm going and I've experienced like the, what I call the source you know yeah so I and I feel like you know this is an illusion it, well I know it's an illusion you know um I know it's an illusion but you know it doesn't help me live this life you know like um, sorry. I, don't, I don't have a fear of death anymore which is good you know but I still got to live my life you know do you, do you ever get to any of the meetings like in person stuff or or is that not possible for you um what sort of meetings Are the non-duality meetings in in london or um know? um not well not not as well not as such but i've talked to people who've had 
I've got, you know, I have talked to people who've had and made friends with people who've had, you know, a similar experience. And I, you know, okay. I'm quite aware that, you know, you know, people will say they've had the experience, but I wouldn't on speaking to them, I would know, you know, it's such a okay. surrender for ego death experience. And, you know, so I have connected with people and discussed it, you know, but you know, I still like think that I don't I don't know like I'm glad I had it but it you know it's made me yeah it's made me more isolated in my life really and and I have you know I have an urge to speak about it but I you know to write about it but I don't know because it's so unusual and it's so it's so unusual and kind of like um controversial and and really difficult to understand because the concepts of non-duality you know, is very difficult to understand. And I have taught, I've, there's a pagan group I was in and I've talked to them and obviously they t- they completely didn't get it. Oh yeah. Um, I think it's something that you, maybe you can't understand unless you've actually, you know, had the experience maybe. Yeah. yeah. Cause I, I, if someone told me about my experience I wouldn't be able to understand it. Okay. Cause it's not, it's not, you know, it's not separate from you. I became it and it became me. Things didn't happen. I merged with it, you know. I was oh. it. It was okay. me. So so there's an urge to communicate this, but there's a kind of reluctance as well. Like, because yeah. I was sort of thinking it could help you integrate it. Like, if you can kind of maybe push through that a little bit and just find your own way of expressing it somehow. But you probably know that already. <laughs> I don't know, like I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know sort of where or how, you know, to or to whom to express it. Do you know what I mean? So the people in your life aren't are are just totally and they're they're much they're not interested in anything of like even a spiritual nature or never mind on dual or have you tried to speak or are you just oh no obviously like you know that you know we have different relationships and I do have quite a few people who I can talk to about it Mm -hmm. but that's beyond that you know not not sort of normal friends or family or anything okay was there big before and after for you like you, you kind of radically do you notice a lot of difference in yourself? Like, do people pick yeah. up on that? And you're... Yeah, massive difference. Okay, well, that's going to alienate you even more, maybe, because, I mean, it does vary that, doesn't it? I mean, for some people, it's actually quite a small thing if there's not been, like, a lot of psychopathology there, or... No, it was a massive, massive thing, you know. Okay. Like, it was the biggest thing in my life ever. Okay, so... You're really changed. Yeah. So it's good. It's good, but you're stuck with the isolation right now. Yeah. So you know, and I just I just wanted to like join in, see if other people feel similar, or if indeed other people have had the non-dual experience, or if not, how you know, how do people interpret non-dual? Because it is a very difficult concept to understand mind you know uh, yeah I think so people who haven't had the experience very difficult to talk about I think it there's no language for it really yeah yeah that's true no. well <laughs> Do you want to say anything else about Ellie? Um, just about like, you know, I, I'd be curious in the group as to who's had a non-dual experience and it, or if not, how do you understand non-duality? Because, you know, it's one thing to, to understand it in the mind, but it's another thing to understand it through you know, an altered state of consciousness and not a, a different state of consciousness, a completely different thing. So if people could say, like, if they've had a non-dual experience, I think I read that you had Dawn. 
yeah that's, <laughs> that's i don't know why i'm here yeah 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 i did it was 10 years ago but um what what i notice is in some of the talks like the in-person meetings you'll actually find there's quite a lot of people who've had these glimpses or or actually you know a permanent shift even though there's no shift if you know what i mean so I don't really make assumptions when I meet someone, whether they have or haven't, because I know it's it may seem uncommon and in, in, in the you know in general society, maybe it is, but it's 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 actually not that uncommon. You come across it quite a lot as well. So you, you know, so yeah, in a meeting that can be actually a good percentage of people will have experienced this. It's you know glimpses or or some sort of yeah the mind doesn't get of course the mind understanding is a different thing but yeah it's more common I don't think anyone really makes that assumption a speaker in a non-duality talk anymore I think there's more recognition of that and some people really just come along for the sense of community because they're also feeling isolated to some degree you know so and sometimes they're met with some hostility, like if you have a partner who feels quite threatened by that and who might actually ridicule it or get angry about it, you know, that sort of thing goes on as well. So there can be consequences to this. It can be a loss, you know, it can be a loss of certain friendships, certain relationships if you do come out with it. So, you know, and not everybody's going to like the changes, even if in you, even if they are positive because they want the drama and they can't engage with you on that level maybe so that can be difficult too um i don't know if you find that maybe you have i don't know um, i don't know if any of that's any help in a, in a sense you're kind of on your own too do you know and and I'm sure you'll work through it and find your way, like because you just, you know, it tends to, it tends to move you anyway. There tends to be an ongoing kind of falling away of stuff that that happens after this. There's more, you know, maybe awakening to more of the bringing light to more of the psychological stuff as well, and you know, falling away of other um, externally, internally, you know anyway yeah i agree I've, i found it helpful also to uh talk to other people and kind of immerse myself for a little while um i can't tell you how long it was but yeah after the shift i I couldn't get enough because it just felt like um, whether it was Tony Parsons or whatever, it was just, this was speaking my language. It was, it was like somebody else was putting into words something that I could not articulate. I couldn't, um, I just, I didn't even know what had happened. And it started to kind of make sense of things. So I, f I found the, so-called non-duality community to be uh, of help. Do you find that like when you're like at this meeting and other meetings or? Ellie? Oh, um, well, um, I've not really, uh, yeah. Yeah, I haven't really been to that many, but yeah, it, it helps because um you know, to know that, oh my God, there's actually other people who understand what you're saying and, you know, you're not so alone, you know, and it, it is very difficult to describe it, you know, because there is no language for it, you know, there isn't the language, you know, so you have, you have to, you have to try to use words, but they're not, you know, they're not sufficient really. You know, so yeah, I yeah, it's nice to connect with others. You know, because yeah, it's like, wow, you know, yeah, you just you know, you feel like not so alone in it. 
you know, like hearing somebody else describe exactly what I could not express. And I was like, yeah, that's it, that's it. You know, it was like this recognition and it was beautiful, but, and I couldn't get enough for a while. You know, it wasn't like a seeking, it was more just like I wanted to listen to somebody else share what, what it seemed to have happened to me, you know? It was, it was a, an interesting period of time, but I think that helped. And also, uh, what, sorry. Talking, no, no, go ahead. I was just sort of thinking also like, aside from listening to people and all that, there's just something about being with someone who gets this and talking, it doesn't matter what the hell you're talking about. It's, it's just kind of there in the background. And it, I think that's lovely as well, just to experience that, you know, you can almost kind of pick up on that. The energy's different and you don't get the same points of friction in conversation anyway. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of speaking your language, whatever you're talking about to some degree, there's a subtle difference there that's, you know, so anyway, it's just, just yeah, there. I think so. I think so too. Definitely. Yeah. Got a few other hands up. Um, is it, you have any, anything else, Ali? Um, no, not at the moment. <laughs> Thank All you. All right. Well, we we can uh, talk later if you like, but just want to get to Micah. He's had his hand up for a while. Yes. So nice to see both of you again. Hi. <laughs> Hello. And, and there is uh, like a nice feel of openness in these meetings, like kind of unfolding. But in the same time, I was wondering about uh, like reactions of the autonomic nervous system that there is maybe sometimes same time uh, kind of folding like self-preservation uh, like um, I sometimes call call it like a turtle effect like um, like like an unfolding but at the same time for the like there is some kind of self preservation happening in the same time. Could you like comment, we could talk something about it. Like uh, at the moment, like when I'm looking myself, I'm getting like red, like. Uh, so she wanna go or? Right. Well, you go first. I th think you should just go first and I'll. All right, okay. yeah, yeah. All right, well, it just makes me think of maybe that that's a kind of, you know, you're, you're talking about the nervous system. So maybe, maybe that is the fight flight. So maybe it feels like turtle, like you're, you're almost like you're kind of withdrawing. So, so maybe there's a kind of process going on there that you're withdrawing into, I don't know, you've, we've, we've talked before <laughs> me here. So um, it could just be flipping over to the sympathetic nervous system from the parasympathetic. So there's a free state going on and whatever the psychological, you know, stuff that you, you've got is going on. So it may feel quite um, very free, very boundless at times, and then very constricted, but doesn't, if, I mean, if the, if the ident identification is completely falling away, it won't feel constricted, but nevertheless, it will feel not so good if, if that's activated, if you're you're in that, you know, cortisol arousal state, fight flight, um, which must be frustrating as hell. But I mean, yeah. So maybe it's just you're gonna sort of flip flop for a while between those those two until it's one thing. But it doesn't mean to say you won't get um, free states or withdrawal or whatever it is that's going on for you because obviously i don't know i'm i'm making a guess i'm may, may may it be just sinus may, may it be just what sinus Sh you, like, yeah yeah sh yeah it could could be i mean some people are yeah i've got i've got shyness I, if it's extreme shyness yeah and you're, you're speaking you're speaking in a 
you know, on Public. live. Like it's that's that's no easy thing. Yeah, and yeah, and there can be just a natural need to withdraw as well. I mean, if you're an introvert, that's where you get your strength from. That's where you get your equilibrium. There's too much out there, too much socializing, and you you want to feel sane. You go and you withdraw. You go home. You bury yourself in a book or <laughs> close the curtains. I don't know. Just keep the world out there and so it could be yeah sure anything I mean only you know at the end of the day only you know nobody can really know what's going on with you no matter what you know they've studied or been through you know so I don't know. um yeah yeah I just see yeah uh, that as um shine it <clears throat> excuse me it's not wouldn't be my shyness it's just um this body mind organisms wiring and there's nobody that's shy it's just like in self-preservation i don't know if this is what you meant by you know if a car is coming at me i'm getting getting out of the way but that's just an automatic response you know this this thing is like on automatic pilot <laughs> so whatever laughter comes out you know different feelings emotions sensations getting red in the face it's just what's happening you know but i i, I don't think that um as far as when i say wiring like um there's no, nobody can control that, like blinking or heart beating or breathing and uh, different uh, neuroses or different um, characteristics of the, uh, the character. You know, that's why we use this word character in these meetings. Which there's nothing you can do about the character. The character is the character. But if the character changes, the character can change. But that's also not in our control. <laughs> so. Um, is there anything else you want to say about that, uh, Don? Or no. I was just, just no. going to say when you when you go red in the face, when you're shy, it's awful. Like you just, I mean, it's you know when shame comes. I mean, you know, everybody talks about that. You want the earth to swallow you up. I mean, it's it's bad enough being shy, but when you go around the face, it's I've had that. So yeah, it's it's difficult. I mean, but, yeah, yeah. Like I I feel good, like just like stretching oh, sometimes, yeah. like oh, but but I think yeah, yeah. that was that was nice. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. All right. Next up, we have Lewis. Please unmute yourself. Hi, hi, Walter. Hi, Dawn. Hi. Uh, thanks for doing this. Um, I think I've just got a couple of maybe it's all quite broad questions. I mean, you talk quite a lot, Dawn, about integration. Can you just expand on that? And I know you, I think you might also work with people regarding that. I mean, how do you, I mean, what exactly do you mean by that? And how do you approach that? Are you, are you purposely having your camera off by the way? Because I can't see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, okay. What do I mean by that? I mean, it doesn't really mean anything, but um, I find, I think for some people, it helps to kind of maybe to talk it through and to kind of like if you struggle with um, knowing what's going on with you, sometimes it's, to be able to talk that through maybe you know um you have problems with relationships now that you didn't have before um uh maybe you know it's bringing up uncomfortable bringing up there's nothing to bring up but if there's uncomfortable emotions around it or whatever is the case you know like in every case it's different it it just means that it's a kind of word I just use because some people have problems afterwards and it's almost like to give them permission to talk about that, that like, 
there's somewhere you can go and talk about that and that's okay like because anything can arise afterwards um you know you might have energetic phenomenon afterwards and kind of suppress that or not talk about it or or just um I don't know just just want to just really just want to have someone as a signing board for you or you know I mean does that help or not help <laughs> I, I, I kind of I kind of yeah I think I understand um why do you ask you... what what where does your question come from for you? because I think you mentioned the word afterwards quite a lot and that I guess that hasn't been my experience. I mean, it's kind of started and never stopped. Even, um, I mean, yeah. Um, so I, I don't. Um, so I'm trying to give you a straight answer. Um, it, I don't know. I think it's because I've basically okay. Maybe I'll just give you a, a, a more detailed answer. Um, just, I mean, in a meeting a long time ago. I mean, probably 15 years ago ago or so. Um, I guess the way I describe it, which which isn't entirely accurate, but it's just in a shortcut, is the ability to put things to the back of my mind was turned off, and it was really difficult for a long time. Right. Okay. And kind of ever since, it kind of made me face a lot of stuff, which is good in the long term. In the short term, it was really unpleasant. Um, but I didn't know what was going on, and I didn't know how to deal with it. Right. And that's why maybe the word integration is quite. Maybe I'm sort of latching onto that because for me it kind of started. I mean. I maybe a releasing process or whatever you want to call it started and has never okay. stopped. Um, All right. But okay. For me, for me, it's not after because I'm still <laughs> I'm still a seeker. So okay. um, so yeah, I mean the process has become a lot easier. I mean, still it can be quite intense sometimes, but it's just part of life now and it has become a lot easier. Okay. And also, okay. I mean, kind of related that to that as well. I find if I stay away from meetings too long, I start to get more and more contracted. Yeah, so I have okay. to go. I have to go to meetings, but then meetings stir me up. So it's just one thing or another. But I mean, yeah, sure. feeling feeling better, but feeling stirred up is better than just feeling ever more contracted. So I guess I'm kind of interested in, I guess, how you approach it and why you why you why you put quite a lot of focus on that. I mean, well, I guess it, would would you say it comes from your story and it was yeah. important to you, so you're showing that. I think I think okay, in my in my story you know like when because the mind kind of stopped um almost totally there was there's nothing really going on so there seemed to be no problems whatsoever and there wasn't and just because I didn't experience any problems didn't mean to say my life was okay so I was allowing certain things in my life that were really unhealthy and I couldn't see that because I was just so you know happy I'll use the word happy with with what is you know so I mean, you can't do anything with someone like that because they're not going to recognize anything's up. But I realized that, you know, I'm not the only one who's who's experienced it like that or, you know, or, you know, trauma seems that sometimes trauma can survive this as well. So maybe out of the blue, you, you know, you start getting traumatic reactions or, um, you know, like there's and and if there's no kind of name for that, if there's no um because obviously this is the timeless and there's no identification but if you just stop there and, you, and and you're actually coming to your crisis which is possible or you know then there is a kind of there is somewhere you can go there is it's okay to be like that you can name it and you can talk about it that's kind of why I use the word integration because it's been yeah it's been like you say it's been relevant to me and relevant to others and you know I wish I'd known uh what I know now earlier on because you know I've saved a lot of time in the timeless you know whatever but yeah does that kind of well does, I guess I'm just curious and I don't know if it's I don't know if this is interesting to anyone else or not but I mean like when you say it saves you some time, I mean, what I mean, what issues were occurring, and how did I guess talking about it or talking to specific people help? Um, well, I don't want to go into my personal issues, but needless to say, um, so things like you know narcissistic abuse, and you know, I 
I didn't I didn't have a sense of what equality was or what fairness was and I didn't realize that because that's those are a kind of learning a condition you know conditioning from very early on and if that's all you know you don't know anything else so you don't know when something's out or when something's not right you know so um I was blithely just carrying on as normal without kind of questioning I think because there's always that it, if the mind isn't compulsive anymore and it, obviously most people the mind is in the background it's not not so intrusive or whatever but there, there seems like you know kind of choice in a way to just drop out of that and not look at things and fair enough if you don't want to I, I wouldn't I, I'm not about shoots and oughts and I think there are some of the things that do drop away of shoes or not so like you've got to decide for yourself but um it's stuff I just just didn't occur to me so you know so um maybe I would have changed certain aspects of my life sooner but it, it's fine I've learned for me what I speak about I've learned from my experience so I'm kind of grateful for that in a way and but, um, okay I just I guess I could just go one other question I mean if you don't mind talking about it um yeah, no. but I mean I've I only know I guess a little bit of, of your story and uh -huh. one part um you mentioned is you went through a, I'm gonna paraphrase because I'm gonna remember it wrong mm -hmm. but I think you said you had a, a long period of depression and you woke up to love or something like that yeah again I'm paraphrasing but do you mind just expanding on that a bit well, yeah, I mean, when love was seen, you know, that that changed everything. You know, it was like another life in a sense. So there was only love. Like, there's no looking back in that. So it's it was like um, sort of reincarnation, if you like. Um, yeah, so... In a way, that transforms everything because you're you're living here and now, aren't you? So everything is happening here and now, whereas before it was so much um, of you know the the you know so much living was done through the mind, which isn't living at all. It's just a living death, really. So it's coming just for me. It was just the the wow of coming out of the head into where I am. But of course, there's no no one to experience that why is that is is that an issue with you you're asking me about it but no I, I sorry I, I guess I just find it interesting I, I think um yeah I, I think I just find it interesting and it just because um because I've got I've got a bit, I've got just a very short synopsis of your story um, oh right okay and, and I just thought it was you meant yeah and I just thought that was interesting as I don't know if the period of depression was part of this was I guess is exacerbated by seeking or just part of life and I, I don't know I guess I'm just interested in people um yes some of that yeah well there was an intense period of 10 years where I was suicidally depressed that was very very intense so it kind of took you know took me out of that so which isn't uncommon I suppose in this, the stories you listen to um but yeah, um, I don't know what else to say about that. Like, um, but you find it in your own case, it, it sort of drops away more in the meetings. Like, um, I mean, I, I, I wasn't, <coughs> excuse me. I mean, I wasn't in it. I don't think um, emotionally or even, I was in a good way, sort of late twenties. And I don't think my life was going in a good direction for any right. other reasons. And then when that meeting kind of shook me up, I think it was important, but yeah, it was really unpleasant for quite a few years, but again, it was quite, I didn't know what was happening. I didn't exactly know how to deal with it. And I sort of learned that slowly. Okay. But I think it was important and it was beneficial, but obviously it doesn't always feel like it at the time, especially if you're, if it's such, if you know, um, yeah, if you don't really know what's going on. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I've never, like, I've never, like, like yourself, maybe yourself and other people in this media, I've never had the big wow, Um, but it's, I don't know, 
I don't know, it just seems very, very, very incremental. But yeah. just um it's a lot easier now. And you know, but yeah, if I stay again, if I stay away from meters too long, it just I just go contracted. So I just do need to keep coming back to this for now. <laughs> I kind of get that. Like it doesn't make any sense in terms of this in a way, but there is a kind of like that that let go that can happen in the meetings and somehow just dip in into it. There is something helpful for about that about which you can say nothing really but um yeah it makes sense um and a lot of what we said like the maybe the lack of agenda in the meetings and the kind of it's just kind of okay to sink into whatever's going on for you whether it's frustration because you're seeking like crazy or if the self just kind of seems to become more subtle or just drop away entirely for the duration of the meeting so there is it's it's a nice place to go where nothing is asked of you I, I mean I, I mean I use the phrase I mean it's maybe not not accurate and maybe a bit of a I don't know trite phrase I use the word like spiritual top up I seem to need it and it just I don't know um your yeah, spiritual walk, right? spiritual You're... top up oh yeah 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 okay yeah yeah <laughs> that makes sense it makes sense like, yeah. It doesn't make sense at the same time. I mean, it doesn't make sense logically. This stuff doesn't, does it? But yeah, it totally makes sense. Yeah, I just, yeah. I guess you just use verbal shortcuts to talk about stuff, which is sort of difficult to talk about. Yeah, I mean, it. it's nice after awakening too, sometimes even given a meeting um, or, or just being in that environment, there is something nice about it. I guess because there's no equivalent and it is sharing something that's deepest you know, to you or most, you know, something that's really important to you. Um, I don't know, <laughs> but it just feels really good, right? And, uh, yeah. Okay. All right, no, thanks for that. Um, oh, was nice to speak. Do you have anything to add, Walter? You... Well, just uh, when I think of integration, the integration kind of happened all by itself. Um, I'd say two things about that. <clears throat> One, I was, my mind was so blown that I couldn't even get on a, a bus or a train without, I just look around and it was just amazing seeing, the only way I could describe it was like empty bodies. Like it was so clear there was no one in here and there was no one in any other body. And that just kept blowing my mind. Um, where I just look at someone, I was like, wow, there's no one in there. <laughs> um, and that settled down, you know. So it's, it's, it, you know, they talk about the um, ordinary being extraordinary. And I'd say it became more ordinary, but still extraordinary. So it became, uh, as you know, parent time went on, it just seemed more natural and less like, wow, 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 like every second. So there was that. And then the other side was um, maybe more like with Don saying, I used to be also a bit of a doormat and a people pleaser. And um, because I was a seeker, you know, and, and when the seeking fell away, it's not just spiritual seeking, it's um, seeking for approval, seeking for validation, seeking for um, anything to elevate this thing in that way. And once it was seen that all is perfection, I kind of stopped taking shit in that and that had to calm down as well because <laughs> it was almost too like well if you don't like it then you know take it or leave it and this kind of attitude uh, almost kate was coming out of me uh, which was very unlike the uh, old character i guess um so when seeking falls away there's a lot of other things that kind of go with that and and there's a big change in the character in that way you know, in some ways it didn't change at all, but I'd say in some ways it did. Um, so, you know, it became certainly love, but also this um, 
there was no need for me to compromise myself or become what I thought someone else wanted me to be or any of that type of behavior. Um, but it was pretty radical at first. Like, you know, I wasn't telling everyone to fuck off, but it, you know, could have, <laughs> if it hadn't uh, sort of settled down, it might have been like even more, um, I don't know what the word for that is, but you know, uh, but anyway, so there was an integration where where it became more ordinary. It became more, and this awakening incorporated into daily life in, in a very normal and natural way. Um, so I think somebody said it's just like normal life, only you're two inches off the ground or something. So it, it's just like very ordinary, but still the wow is there. But the integration was, it had to, I assume, calm down in a way because, uh, not, you know, it'd be weird functioning like that forever, I think. <laughs> <coughs> so I don't know, but it was, you know, that's all okay. I can say well, about in Thanks integration. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Lewis. Uh, next up, we got Richard. Please unmute yourself, Richard. Hi. Nice to speak to you again. Oh, hiya. <laughs> hiya. Um, yeah, I was just interested, really, at the start there, Walter, you said that um, non-duality awareness may or may not be accompanied by bliss. And uh, I think Lewis there mentioned about his, his development has been incremental. And... Uh, I'm not, uh, well, what happened for me was, um, I wouldn't have said at the time it was non-duality, um, although I was aware that there were no, there was no dualism, <laughs> um, but it was more, it, it was bliss, it was ecstatic joy, um, overwhelming happiness, um, and I'm just wondering if, uh, well, does it happen to some people that they don't get that, I guess, <laughs> is, is one question. I have a second question as well, um, which is um, when after it happened and since when I've had harmonics of it, um, life has sort of presented very tough challenges. And I just wonder how common that is, that it's almost like you're being tested, you know, sort of, like, ah, you've got this awareness now, see if you can handle this. <laughs> and I just wonder how common that, that sort of thing is for people. I don't know about anyone else, but um, I'd say this piece that passes understanding is, is always there mm. but i'd say it seems more prominent at times than others mm -hmm. it seems more louder or quieter depending on what's happening um and so you asked about bliss. Do some people have it or not? I don't. I don't really know. But see, still, I think that's just what's apparently happening. Just, just as anything else, you know, just as um, any other feeling, emotion, sensation. But there's yeah. not. There's nothing apart. There's not. Not a life happening to me that's handing me challenges. You know, I just, I just, this is boundless life. So it's, there's no, it's no thing appearing as a challenge or no thing appearing as bliss, but, but I see there's nothing special about that. There's nothing. 
I didn't attain that. You see what I mean? Yeah, I think I do. But I mean, for me, um, it wasn't just that this was something happening. It was it was different. It was separate. It was it was a almost a, um, a culmination. Uh, oh, so. This is, uh, I remember at the time thinking it, it didn't matter what people did. It didn't matter if they meditated or used religion or anything, that this was what was going to happen. This is what it is because it is already. Um, and so all was well. And, and so it was, it was different from, it wasn't just well, now I'm experiencing bliss, now I'm experiencing depression. Um, it was, like I say, more of a culmination, a sort of, ah, you know, you sort of look at the sky and, ah, it was different. You just knew, you just knew. <laughs> Was that a two-parter, or what was the other question? <laughs> um, I'm, I'm not sure I asked a question. <laughs> I thought you had two questions in there, but I... Well, the, se the, sec the second one was, uh, was um, whether um, it's common for people to then be challenged. Oh, right, right, right. Because it, I, I certainly have been. Um, and yet, through that challenge, there was, the, there was an underriding feeling of all is well, even though in the physical life you could say it definitely wasn't. I just wonder if, if that happens to other people. Well, I wouldn't say that there would be a connection. I think the challenges just happen. It's a part of human experience. So I don't think they're related. I don't think necessarily if there's a shift, then uh, there's something that's going to start throwing challenges at you. I think challenges happen or they don't, but in that way. Maybe but I also do, like you mentioned, uh, it just seems like it's just part of this perfection. The challenges are a part of the perfection. Mm. But then, you know, it's not a sense that they're my challenges. It's just, I, you know, I don't think. Um, there's somebody throwing them at me. <laughs> something apart from me, like the universe is handing me something, you know, I know people talk like that. Like the universe has my back or it doesn't have my back. Like I don't, there's, no, I, there's, not, I, a, there's I not a separate universe. No, I, w I wouldn't have thought that either. Um, I think more it's maybe a case of how you, after that enlightenment or whatever it was, how you then react to a challenge. That might be the challenge. Can I add something or? Please do. Yeah. I was just gonna say that if, if you've changed quite a lot afterwards and, and something is repeating itself, like the challenge, you know, there's a kind of repeat challenge there, you know, it might be worth looking at that because you have shifted so that maybe there is something to kind of look at and deal with there because if it's a repeat it's obviously a, a pattern that's kind of coming up and maybe coming up writ large like a the same way like a dream that's a repeating dream sometimes is like the unconscious just kind of yelling at you to look at something so I wouldn't be dismiss it totally and Bliss, I think if people have experienced a lot of bliss and they're speakers, they're probably going to mention that. And if they don't mention it, it's probably because they haven't. I mean, not, not saying some people would just see it as irrelevant or whatever, but I think that varies considerably. And for a lot of people, it calms down. And it's just, anyway, I don't <laughs> Just from a... Uh, Probably, I don't know if that's any help. Yeah, well, it's just something that I've looked at, you know, why does this happen? 
Um, is there something to be learned here? There was, um, you know, Adyashanti, <laughs> let's just bring Adyashanti in. He talks an awful lot about that because after he had his awakening, he had he tried to do his athletic stuff. I think he was a cyclist or something. And he kept getting ill and ending up in bed and did it. This uh, challenge kept coming up and up and up again until he just totally renounced that identity. I think there was something like that. I might've got it wrong, but it doesn't surprise me if something, because we, we, we're on repeat, you know, a lot of us have got repetition compulsion, you know, some, um, some problem comes over again and then suddenly we become aware of it. We're actually just repeating the past. So maybe it's something from before that you're actually now aware of, you know, it might be worth exploring. I would explore it. I mean, why not? You know, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you might as well. Why not? <laughs> Probably doing your head in sometimes. I don't know. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Thanks. It's, yeah. Thank you, Richard. Got a few questions in the chat. Uh, where are they? Sorry. Oh, there we go. Uh, so I'll ask you, Don, this is a question in the chat. Could shame still arise when there is no individual? Yeah, any, absolutely any emotion can arise. Um, shame can oft, often be interdependent as well. Like, you, you know, someone can cause, you know, cause you to feel shame in a way there's no cause and effect. And you can say, well, no, what can make you, you know, create a feeling in you. But actually, if you say that to someone who's being abused to fuck, I think they might get really angry because, so yeah, shame can arise. Yes, it can. Um, any feeling can. Shame is one of the earliest emotions we experience. We experience that like a few weeks old, I think. I mean, it's so deep in us. There's natural shame is when we do something socially weird or, or you know, out of order. There's toxic shame, you know, which is we go into a shame where we actually express ourselves authentically. We start to come out. Maybe you've woken up and you start to be yourself more, express more of yourself, how you feel. There may be shame in that. Maybe you want to actualize some of your gifts in the world. You may feel shame about that. You might do it and you might be full of shame. So it can be kind of growing pains as well. Um, and if you're around tox someone quite toxic, you may be feeling their shame because if you're with a narcissist, they are full of shame and they like to have someone to kind of hold that for them. <laughs> so they will find a way of you know, getting you to hold the shame. So yeah, and anything can arise. And and that is at the same time, there's a lack of self-conscious. I mean, there's no self, it's it's all arising in this. And it's it seems par it's paradoxical basically, but yeah, so don't suppress your shame because you think <laughs> you think that it's not uh non-dual. Because there's there's that as well. All the motions are included in this. Um yeah. Yeah, there are no rules. I was speaking with someone, yeah, and, and they were comparing themselves against a lot of what they heard speakers say. And I know a lot of people say, no shame, no guilt, no blame. But there's never been anyone to blame. There's never been anyone that has shame. And there's never been anyone to forgive. And there's never been anyone that needs to be forgiven. But all these things can still apparently happen because they always have apparently happened. So, you know, there's no one in here that is like, well, there's no one here. So I'm not going to feel bad about something that I've done. I don't know if this is the same as shame or just or guilt or whatever, but, you know, bad feelings arise. Uh, forgiveness arises, not forgiving arises. Um, this is not a prescription. It's not applied non-duality as I've heard it. It's not like you, you're gonna use the, what's being said here and apply it to your life. 
just describing what is. And what is, is whatever is. Whatever is happening. So if it's shame, it's shame. But I just find it odd that there would be like this checklist of things like, oh, I'm enlightened, so no more shame, no more blame, no, no more this. It makes no sense to me. Um, yeah, go ahead. Oh no, I was just going to add in this shame thing. If if that's if that's a big thing, sometimes you know if if you're stuck with that, like that's where a psychotherapy can be good, or if you have a confidant that you trust, because um, I've been stuck with that in the past and have shared the stuff that I was shame, you know, causing me shame and having the experience of being totally accepted and, and no reaction, no judgment at all is so freeing and so healthy that you can sometimes realize that actually, you know, that that can just totally fall away and you can realize actually you're just, you're just kind of taking on, you know, like I said, if you're with a narcissist, you're taking on their shame. You may be getting it from elsewhere. It may not actually belong to you. So it's, it's, don't get stuck with that if you can, you know, express things in a safe environment if you can. So, because it's a painful one. It's very, it shuts you down a lot and it takes you out of life. So don't get stuck with that if you can avoid it for your own. That's my advice. <laughs> Thank you, Don. I have another one in the chat says, hi, Walter. I heard one more, one of the more popular radical non-dual speakers say that during his five day retreat, half of those who attended apparently fell away. Can you comment on that? Uh, wow. Well, we got 20 people in this meeting. So if 10 people fall away, let me know and then I'll brag about it on my next Zoom. Uh, joking. I don't know. Uh, did that happen? Maybe it happened. Apparently. Half of the people fell away. Well, that's a, that's a pretty good, um, what do you call it? Statistic. It's impressive. I don't know. Maybe it did happen. I don't know how I could comment on that. I wasn't at the retreat, but I, you'd have to talk to the participants. Um, so I have no comment, but that's amazing. That's a good, uh, that's a good rate. <laughs> um, okay, next one. Isn't the whole logic of the emotion then undetermined? Not sure what that means. <laughs> Do you know what that means? No idea. Okay. <laughs> Let's try next one. What is the purpose? of shame for the individual. Stop me being an asshole. That's normal shame. <laughs> or the consequence of being an asshole. <laughs> Toxic shame just unfortunately keeps you from being authentic. It, it can do, it can, yeah, it's really, really difficult. I think a lot of people with trauma, like CPTSD, childhood trauma, have have a lot of toxic shame. So, and it uh, comes from the inner critic as well. So that part of the mind that's the internalized voices of your parents, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, yeah. So, in fact, you may not even be aware of that portion of the mind. You may just feel the shame and be very unconscious. So it's very, very painful stuff. This. So. Mm. I read that one wrong actually it says is the whole logic of the emotion undermined oh well there's different ways do you want to <laughs> I, I don't know a lot about shame so well uh, you know emotions are seen in different ways you know on different levels so um I don't know, on one level, so I think it's Anahata, the heart chakra, if you're talking in terms of the chakras, 
shame applies or emotion applies to an object. I feel angry because somebody did something to me. You go further up the chakra system, you realize that external factors have got nothing to do with the emotion. It's all about me. It's all about the psyche, if you like. The psyche is a self-moving thing. So the emotion is seen to be nothing to do with me, except in the case of narcissistic abuse. And then you go further up to, you know, awakening or non-dual, which you can say nothing. Everything is just seen to arise for no one, for no reason. It's meaningless. Anger disappears, whatever, love, um, love um, sadness disappears, you know, or energy, you know, you can't even speak about that, but it's, yeah, things are just appearing, no meaning to any of it. It's just appearing for no one. Um, but if you ignore all the other levels, if you ignore the fact that you're feeling really sad because someone you love has died or you're feeling really angry because someone has stolen your wallet, <laughs> you're just going to be in trouble. So anyway, it's just, you know, so anyway, it's just a way of looking at things, but it's all just shit arising for no one. That's... That's all in the story. RK, come on in. Hey, how's it going? Um, can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yes, hi. Hi. Yep, great. Oh, okay. Um, I, I just had an experience like a, about a year ago. I don't know if it was an awakening or, or not, but it was like um, everything was just like infinite and eternal, like including thoughts. And like everything inside, everything outside. Well, there was no inside, outside. Kind of like what you guys are talking about. But there was like, um, um, it was like a fear there too. Like, felt like death. And like, I didn't want to like go in all the way. Like there was like a pulling back. Because it felt like dying. <laughs> so, and then the, after I like pulled back, I get, this is the only, the only way I can describe it but there was like a wanting to go back even though when i was there i was like it seems scary but it was also seen that it was just like love and it was always that and it was everything always but i think there was just like something that's like pulling or like a, some kind of like a fear there um and it, it kind of resonated with what you guys were talking about like the shame and stuff like that so i don't know if maybe that has something to do with it you know, but um, yeah, that's my question, I guess. Do you want to go off there? You go. <laughs> I'm, can you? I'm sorry, Arkane. Okay, no worries. Okay. You, sure. you no, know, I, I, well, yeah. I just want yeah. him to repeat it, but uh, oh, okay. if you got it, then go for it. Uh, well, well, uh, well yeah. If it, I mean, it's often likened to standing on the edge of an abyss, you know, like, so fear can, fear is common in the story of this. I mean, fear, I mean, there's, a, it is death, right? But you've experienced the whole thing as well, the love, the, and, and they're not mutually exclusive either. Um, so it can arise together. So it's not, there's nothing that shouldn't be there. So for you, it sounds like love was seen as well. Is that correct? It's, but it's, is it a glimpse? I, I'm not sure. Yeah, it seemed like it was a, a glimpse. I'm just not 100% sure, but okay. it, just, it was seen that everything, there, it wasn't solid. It was everything was uh, infinite and made, made out of love, including me and my thoughts and everything that exists. Yeah. And but I think there was, it was almost like the complexity of the infinite, infinite nature of it was a little bit like terrifying in itself. But even though it was seen that it was love and that's all there was, you know. Um, and I haven't experienced that personally, but I, I mean, I, Susan Segal did experience ongoing fear in her abiding awakening. So, and I think it arrived. But, oh, it's just someone, as a woman who, She's not alive now, but she she wrote a book called Collision with the Infinite. Um, but she couldn't make sense of why she had this, you know, terror that was ongoing. Who knows? She went to lots of psychotherapists mm -hmm. and different people, but they make sense of it. So, oh, but also before, usually in the just at the point of the awakening, there can be a lot of fear because of 
basically the annihilation. I, I had it on the, I experienced that just on the point of the surrender, if you like, you know, the seeing of love, it, it, there was fear and then, then there wasn't, that's all I can say that it was really, really intense. It was, I didn't like this mm. and I, I, I didn't want it. And then it was, you know, love. I mean, you can't say anything about that. There's, but it sounds like you experience that, um, this, the fear simultaneously. So that I, I don't, I don't know what to it say. Was like, uh, it was like, it was like, it was like one than the other is like fear and then it felt more personal and then it was like the love and it, that's like uh, I can relate to that that's how yeah I can relate to I think a lot of people can relate to that then and getting the sense mm -hmm. of it now yeah I mean not everybody and, and it's not some people it's just on that right at the you know this moment of seeing is the laughter or whatever but it can be the terror or, or, or not yeah. yeah so I I get I get what you're saying and is kind of horrible and <laughs> and it's not because it's it's death there's no other way of putting it it is death that death to everything you've known as well like it it really is and then it's love you know and that's just beautiful so mm -hmm. yeah i'll just uh i'll just keep coming to these meetings then or whatever i don't know we'll see <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah thank you uh -huh. Yeah, just to say, um, I I experienced that that intense fear kind of like before the surrender, um, and and then you know, but, oh, I don't know, I don't know if it was love next. There wasn't any linear time, but it it I think I think it was it was it was the most fear I've ever felt. You know, well, I think it was to do with the surrender, which is a, a death, an ego death. You know. And I also experienced the love, like, you know, undescribable, unconditional love. But I don't know whether, I, you know, it, it's hard to say then, because there was no then, you know, it was all, you know, it was all, it, it, you know, it was no, there was no linear time, you know, so I don't know which came. I think the fear, the huge fear was, was in the surrender. And then sort of then no, no, yeah. <laughs> so a huge amount of love you know um but it's hard to say when because it's not linear and yeah. a lot of other things mixed in as well but that was definitely there yeah thank you i'll just say um maybe this would make sense arcade but it's kind of like how this the timeless appears as time that um, love can appear as fear, you know, that love is everything. So if there's fear arising, it's, I, I, it can't be put into words, but it's, and somebody was talking about challenges earlier, Richard. Um, I just see that as love too. And that makes no sense. But the, most painful emotions and, and circumstances that have come up since the shift have been seen as love. And I, I don't know how to make sense of that. But is it like this substance, like the thought form itself or like the, um, like the feeling that appearance itself is, is made out of the love, but, but the appearance is not, it's like, it could be, you have a cupcake, that looks like shit, but like the shit is made out of like, uh, <laughs> like, like sugar or something. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. Just like a. Yeah, I like that. Gets... Yeah, yeah. It's like a, <laughs> a cake made to look like <laughs> shit, but yeah. Well, it's, there's, all, there's only one substance, right? So let's call that one substance love. So it's love yeah. appearing as a challenge or fear all right we got uh joey up next and that'll probably do it for today hey walter hey don hey everybody Hi, thank you for putting this on another great session good to see you <laughs> <laughs> yeah great to see you too 
So I had a, had a question with, um, you know, let me just kind of set some terminology. So we use the same terminology, but, you know, the formless form, the emptiness, fullness, um, God and the avatar. Let's, let's go with God and the avatar for now. So, so, so everything is God or everything is energy, uh, including this voice that's coming up. There's no exceptions, just whatever it is, this impulse, it's, uh, it's not generated by the avatar because there is no avatar, uh, but it's generated by this infinite energy or I'll call it God. And then there's that expression with God, all things are possible. So of myself, I can do nothing, but with God, all things are possible. And, and so with that in mind, have you guys explored the, and I know this is kind of like almost a taboo subject in the uh, non-duality uh, circles, but have you guys explored the creative aspect of this, the, you know, the ability to manifest things? Because for example, like with, aliens or different uh, star families which i've got a long history with so i'm not looking for validation if they exist or not and then don i saw one of your videos and it looks like you've had an intimate encounter <laughs> with our star family as well so right. uh, you know c called the aliens so i'm not asking <laughs> for, you know, i don't know about aliens i'm not sure about that anyway <laughs> Oh, I, I thought I saw a video, uh, maybe I, uh, I'm pretty sure, yeah, uh, that you had an encounter with one, like an intimate oh, not, encounter. Um, different dimensions, but I, I wouldn't use the word aliens, uh, an alien environment, you know, like hell experience or something, but not, not actually alien, because that's very specific. I know what you mean when you say that, but I haven't like, experienced that. But oh, okay, yeah. okay. But, but never so, mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, it's infinite, all these different forms, uh, are, are infinite there's just so many different uh, infinite forms but it's all the same thing it's basically the formless with the form so in these so-called higher dimensions these these forms um, are able to do things that we would consider miracles uh, just through this this power of this infinite energy god, god you could say so so and with them it's no big deal to you know, to knock out planet Earth or reconfigure, do all kinds of things that we as a primitive uh, thing would consider miraculous, but this is just normal. So, so with that in mind, have, have you and Walter ever explored, you know, this ability to, to tap into this metaf metaphysical, something that, that does need to be learned, just like learning the piano or anything else, uh, and play with this creative aspect of, you know, God or love? You, know, you get two two plants and you give lots you imagine one to grow in miraculous ways and just like learning the piano you continue to do this and you see these results or you can use it to help people heal uh, help them realize their formlessness have you guys ever had any interest or explored any of these type of things <laughs> Ron? Uh, <laughs> Well, along the way, you're talking about it, like you're talking about manifesting. I mean, you know, I don't know. Um, yeah, so I mean, weird shit happens in, in experiences for sure, but it's I mean, it's outside of the it's outside of not outside of non-duality, but you know, as it's, it's not what this is really about, but. And, and your experiences are obviously quite extreme and you've, you know, stuff that I haven't experienced. So my powers of manifesting, <laughs> you know, if, you know, I couldn't say that I've experienced that particularly. I, I mean, there are times in life where, you know, you seems to be this alignment where you think of something or want something, things are just appearing like all lined up, you know, like the synchronicity stuff. And it is like, wow. And it's very, difficult to kind of just rationalize that away but not in a like um in any way that's um I would use the word miracle or well you know like I suppose an experience can arise you know at the same time as a thought maybe like a lot of people who have an awakening when they uh maybe 
are on their knees or they're at the end of their resources and they say something or they do something or like uh there are things like that that are kind of inexplicable and maybe there's a sort of trans seemingly transpersonal element to it who knows what goes on but I think you mean something like if you're in a different dimension the experiences there can be much bigger and obviously this seeming physical form is limited so much isn't it I mean oh it can't do anything it, it never does <laughs> It never, it, it never does anything. <laughs> hence conflict exists, hence, you know, I don't know, disappointment. I mean, life is just, life is tough awake or not, right? It's just, so yeah, you, you experience something other than this, than, you know, this dimension, but yeah. So what have you manifested then? Go on, like what's your, what's your best? Uh Oh, the best. Well, I haven't really. Uh, there's a guy. There's a, another character in the movie, uh, Black Mad Guru. Uh, another one liberated and things like that. And he's really, uh, you know, going full force with this manifestation type thing. And uh, you know, I've got lots of different experiences with, um, you know, ETs and things of that sort. And uh, so, and it's very clear uh, that you know the the teachings of christ let's say you know of myself i can do nothing but of the father all things are possible but in this in this particular realm in this particular matrix it's a very very uh it's a hellish matrix so so we have not developed these things uh at all really uh at, at all and uh and i was just kind of curious and i'm recently just playing around with this uh because i've always known uh, you know there's nothing that, everything that comes out of everything that's that takes place isn't out of any any form it's always the formless however we are the formless and uh but in this realm we're so uh slave-minded and impoverished and beaten up it's really hard to get past that that we can influence that energy can influence energy it's just beyond our, our limited comprehension in this realm. And uh, so, so it, ju it just sound, it, it, it sounds like it's completely possible. And I just, uh, I haven't done anything uh, worth, worth <laughs> mentioning, <laughs> um, you know, but yet I've witnessed things that are just, you know, definitely, uh, you know, just uh, probably like a lot of people just like, okay, how, how the heck was that done? So and and it just seems it just seems like as as this uh, as this matrix as it gets evolved by this energy that you know maybe this is the next type thing where we start uh, man if we start joining up with this this creative force and uh, play around you know we're gonna go bicycle riding to play around we're gonna go look at geese to play around we're gonna you know we always play the pl playfulness is in the spirit and uh, but therefore. You know, we can crank it up a little bit and play with these metaphysical potentials, and and. Uh, <laughs> I so, think you so, went. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like, yeah, there is something slightly hellish about this realm in certain way. Like, like Earth, mortality. I mean, what the? You know, the fact that we take it kind of for granted because that's all we know. Like, it's. It's actually pretty horrendous, oh, you know, whether you're blissed out or not. I mean, you, it's like everything's fraught, isn't it? It's just difficult. We, yeah. Maybe it's just that's it's, the way it is. I, it's, I it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a death cult. It shouldn't be called life because, <laughs> not really. because, 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 you know, life doesn't really have an opposite. And, uh, but here it's misnamed life. And uh, it's really just like the people that think they're alive are just kind of rotting corpses. Um, just waiting for the time to take place. So it's a very, and, and there's no right or wrong. This is just all, you know, cosmic play, but, but it is a pretty rough, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's rough. It's, it's a rough matrix, but, but it's also beautiful on the other end. So, so, uh, yeah, yeah it's paradoxically beautiful it's paradoxically. And, and, and the re relationships and friendship, you know, there's, there's this richness in the midst of 
all the things that we have, our conflicts, our desires, our frustrations, and but there's these connections and these possibilities in this love, like which is a, is just so unexpected and and really beautiful. But you know, <laughs> and 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 there is other realms where the where the where the avatar, whatever shape it takes place, is uh, you know the lives are eight thousand years, maybe even you know a million years long, and there's you know, no disease, no death. Somehow they, so so even though that's a construct too, and it's infinite energy running that that realm, you know, it's a very, uh, you know, we we can't even fathom that kind of dream or <laughs> nightmare. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, we 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 can't we can't fathom growing up with peace and love, <laughs> and no poverty and no money issues, no energy issues, no you know we can't even fathom that. But but nevertheless, there's endless infinite realms that have this um, and, uh, I mean I agree with you Joey like you know there are endless infinite realms that have this and you know from my that one experience I've seen it you know and I wonder as well like you know I wonder as well about you know, you know how like what do you do with that experience how can that you know how can you use that experience to enhance life and life of people around you and life of the world, you know. And I, you know, I don't know a lot about manifesting, but I've seen things, you know, and it is a, you know, it is about, you know, tapping into a higher self, uh, whatever that, you know, may be. Um, yeah, and I do find that quite interesting. And um, yeah, I mean, you know, life, God, life, particularly my life is really, 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 really hard. And has been you know and um you know to have that experience where you know there is bliss beyond the human imagination and unconditional love beyond anything we you can ever imagine you know it, and then coming back to life is like oh my god like how you know how can I live like this you know when I know that that exists and I but I also know that that's um that's where I'm heading, you know, there's nothing beyond that, that is God or the source, you know, there's nothing beyond it, you know, I have such a, such a certainty about that, you know, um, yeah, I mean, that, that, you know, I think there's um, unlimited consciousnesses, an unlimited amount of consciousnesses, and, you know, the one I've been to with the non dual experience is just, you know, pure unconditional love, none of the problems we have today, you know, and then it's like, but how, you know, it's really hard to live this life with so much, you know, so many problems, you know, so much pain. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. The, uh, the infinite you know, plays so many things. And, and in this realm, we get told we're these rotting corpses versus that we are the uh, infinite potential of everything nameless. So so we get a rough, rough beginning <laughs> on, on this realm, on this realm. And there's no good or bad, it's just the, uh, just, uh, but but Don, I love your laugh. And, and Walter, what, what were your comments on this too? Walter's being quiet. <laughs> um, you know, I, I about manifestation, I don't really have a lot to say, to be honest, about that subject. And uh, we're at 3.52 my time. So let's leave it there. Maybe we'll pick up again, Joey, and we'll get more into this in another one, if that's okay. Abs absolutely, absolutely. All right, thank you. Uh, sure. Love all your interviews, Walter and Don. Oh. Love your laugh and your... <laughs> Cheers for sharing. Cheers. Uh, somebody did ask about a mailing list. So I'll just say I'm working on it. Um, but if you want to be notified about this particular meeting, uh, go to Don's meetup. Uh, Don Garland, is there, um, what, what would you, how would you tell people to find that? Oh, uh, just, um... Just go to meetup, put in my name, it should come up. Um, I do a monthly meetup. It's uh, usually the second Friday 
of the month, um, seven to nine. So just just look up Meetup and put in my name should come up. Non-duality in the search, maybe. Also, um, both of us usually announce these on our YouTube channel. So I would uh, hit the notification bell for both of those so you can be notified and see the new videos. And I always make announcements, letting people know what's coming up. Um, so for me in particular, I do have a Thursday night, well, Thursday night for me, uh, Thursday, Thursdays, 7 p.m. Eastern time. I do a weekly Zoom. Also, um, this Sunday, I'll be talking to Robert Saltzman. So that's very exciting. And then Monday, Dan Litvak. So we got interviews, Zooms, and um, Don and I will continue to do this every month. So um, just stay tuned to those channels. Check out Don's uh, meetup and I'll work on a mailing list to keep everyone informed. Um, but that's about all I can say about that. Any uh, final comments for you, Don? No, that's fine. That just about sums it up, I think. So, all right. Thank everyone, so. Well, thank you so much for coming. You can unmute yourselves and make some noise. <laughs> Thank, thank, you, you thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Wonderful meeting. Thanks.